So I guess the bigger picture here is, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, that the Russian, as much as the Trump White House and Trump himself want to say there's nothing to this Russian connection and Democrats just keep talking about it because they can't accept the fact that they lost the last election and this issue basically is is a non-issue. The Russian connection isn't going away, is it? No, I mean, that's... It's weird because it ebbs and flows now. You know, yeah. we have yeah, like, sure. uh, you know, we had the month the after the inauguration, it was a huge deal. And then it went away. And, you know, sometimes it'll be a health care week. But this has been the pervasive issue. And it's the problem is that it's not just a Flynn problem, you know, especially for the Trump White House. This is not just a Flynn issue. This is a you know, you can't say that Manafort wasn't involved in the campaign. It's Paul Manafort. It's Carter Page. It's Roger Stone. It's Jared Kushner. It's these you know, this is not just a one off issue. And I think it's going to keep following. That. This is not going away. Right. And I think Democrats, I think, run a little bit of a risk of letting the Russia investigation become their Benghazi. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, with Benghazi, there were answers, pretty concrete answers. Everything was out in the open. They got the answers they were looking for pretty quickly. They just kept having hearing after hearing after hearing. Whereas I think with the Russia thing, it's so big and it's so wide ranging and there are so many things that have been left unanswered that like you have to keep pursuing it. Yeah. I mean, I think the the challenge with the Russia investigation is that there's two real parts to it. The, the original part was just to basically go back and kind of look at the Obama administration's intelligence community and how the IC kind of handled everything. And then there's the other part of the Trump connection. So there's these two big parts. Yeah. Uh, and there are three, three at least, well, at least two ongoing investigations. Right? Yeah, two ongoing investigations and the FBI investigation. Yeah, I was counting the FBI and the Senate and the House. The how, I, you can, we'll, yeah. we'll stick it in the pool <laughs> yeah. of like, credible investigations for what? The we next like 15 minutes, I know. Right? We'll never, Whether they ever get there. Yeah. Whether they ever get their act together uh, or not. So uh, at least it's not going to go away until we get the final reports from yeah, it, from I mean, those three sources. It's not going away. There has been, I think, an interesting shift that if Democrats well, are smart, they'll continue down this path. That you saw Feinstein say this week that she had seen no evidence of active mm -hmm. informed collusion between Trump and the Russians, which is actually a smart move because, yeah. frankly, everyone I talk to in the IC does not expect this to be the thing that fells right, Trump. Right. But it's still, like, I mean, you can, it brings us the judgment of the Trump White House into question for sure. And a Clapper yesterday also clarified. That the, the, the Trump people have been saying, oh, even James Clapper says there was no collusion. And he said yesterday, no, there was no collusion. I, I haven't seen the evidence of collusion, yeah. which is a different statement. Yeah, and Clapper is also I, – I think that there's this <coughs> – assumption happening with the Trump White House that if he says he's seen no evidence of collusion, it means, oh, the Russia thing wasn't a big deal. Like, yeah, drop right. it. Even if there was no clear, direct, informed collusion between the Trump campaign and Moscow, it's still a issue. It's still a thing um, that you had just the notion that there was a national yeah. security advisor to the president under FBI investigation. I mean, that is enough of a thing that it needs to be paid attention to. Right. 